for being uh, in our workshop. Uh, thank you for still being here. Uh, I hope everyone has Unity installed in the lap on the laptop. Uh, so first question, uh, who actually wants to, uh, to build a first augmented reality app today? Who actually has Unity installed in the laptop and will follow Vlad step by step to build the app? Please ra raise your hand. Okay, perfect. Perfect, awesome. <laughs> Um, so, let's start with my presentation. I'm Aura Vrgolic, I'm a capability team manager in Metro Systems Romania. Uh, Metro Systems has a big office in uh, Bucharest, a smaller one in Brasov, and it is a new kid in town here in, in Cluj. So, check us out. Uh, come talk with Andrea, who is our, our HR colleague from here, from Cluj. <laughs> um, I have a PhD in Geographical Information Systems. Um, I'm quite passionate about maps, physical or digital maps. Uh, right now, I have uh, in my responsibility capabilities like cloud platform engineering and some other stuff that is better known in the market as DevOps engineering. Well, in this summer, um, I started together with two colleagues of mine. One is Vlad and another one is Mihai. Uh, we started an innovation project in Metro Systems Romania of bringing augmented reality to Metro Keshenkeri stores. Actually, what we want to build, we want to build an app for Metro Keshenkeri's customers uh, to provide them a really cool industry 4.0 type of in-store shopping experience. So stay tuned. I really hope to launch it um, soon. <laughs> so you will see it in Metro Keshenkeri stores. Um, let's see what's the agenda for today. First, I will talk a little bit about what augmented reality is and its relationship with other terms like VR, MR, XR. Um, then I will let you know about uh, what kind of devices we may use to, to tackle or to access augmented reality, uh, just to make sure that all of us have more or less the same understanding about this technical concept. Uh, then I will let you know about what we've built in Metro Systems so far, or what's our status with regards to this field. Um, and then the really cool stuff for you, <laughs> and I think this is what intrigue you, intrigues you most. Um, Vlad will guide you step by step in Unity to actually build your first augmented reality app. You will build it for your Android phones. I hope you have Android phones, or if not, you have to install also um, Apple Kit to, uh, to create your build. So you will see your app on your phone today, if you are working with us. <laughs> okay, ready? Let's start. Augmented reality. Um, Augmented reality is a technology of visualizing digital information, digital insights attached to the real objects from the real world. Um, it's very important to have a clear difference between AR and VR. VR means to put the headset on your eyes and actually go completely into a digital world. Yeah, to go into an immersive experience into 100% digital world. You do not see anything from the outside. That's VR. Then another term uh, appeared in the market about MR, mixed reality. Mixed reality is having 3D objects or digital objects placed in the real world. And the idea is that those digital objects can interact with the physical objects from the real world. Now, uh, some confusion or some debates appeared um, between the experts in the market about the borderline between AR and MR and VR. Where is it the borderline between AR and MR? So, in order to um, clarify all these confusions and all these debates, a new kid is in town, a new term appeared on the market, XR, that's from extended reality. And extended reality is like an umbrella for all the three of them, AR, VR, MR. Now we refer to them as XR, extended reality. <clears throat> and this is something accepted by, by everyone in the industry. Um, now I'm going to show you a movie made by uh, Patio Interactive. That's a, um, a designer studio from US. Um, in collaboration with PricewaterCoopers. 
Um, they made a movie to show the potential of augmented reality in retail last year at the National Retail Federation Day. And the feedback was quite amazing. I find this uh, movie inspirational in terms of what we as industry software developers and leaders may, may, may do in the future. So let's have a look. Uh, we don't have uh, sound? Okay. I think we can find a hacked solution to just use this <laughs> if you have speakers output. How cool is that? <laughs> um, that was a view of having AR, or augmented reality, on smart glasses. And actually, this is one of the two uh, technologies that can access augmented reality. Yeah. One is AR smart glasses, and the other one is the smartphone. Let's talk about smart glasses first. They have some clear advantages, like you have your hands free. You don't have to um, hold on your phone for, for um, visualizing the, the screen. Um, the other one is that they have a natural integration in your behavior, in, your, in the way you interact with the physical environment. Uh, another one is that they offer a real um, future experience for, for us as a consumer. Um, I chose to, to show you today three AR glasses. Um, I'm not telling that they are the best or brightest. Uh, I'm not a seller for these AR glasses. Yeah, I, I do not uh, take any commission for them from them. Um, we just participated uh, one month ago to um, uh, Augmented World Expo. That's the biggest uh, AR event in Europe. It was held in Munich last month. And we tried a lot of AR glasses, and we have identified these three glasses as um, very um, easy to use. And also, they have some productive um, applications that they are already used by some enterprises. So they have some real productive stuff going on. This is why we chose them to, to show them to you. Um, these glasses are a Vuzix Blade. We like them because they are quite um, um, light. Yeah, they, they are like uh, my kind of glasses. Yeah, they are not heavy. Um, and they have a productive application that's very cool, and I'm going to show it to you. Um, they build an app for Singapore Airport in order to be used by the employees in the airport to load the um, luggages in the plane. So I'm going to. I'm going to need again the mic. <laughs> the car goes faster and more efficiently. 
Uh, you see, cargo can't be simply loaded on the plane like passengers. The containers have to be assigned a specific location to balance out their combined weight so the airplane doesn't tip, you know? In the past, they used pen and paper and they had to communicate using phone calls back to the command center. With the AR glasses, everything is being communicated in real time to the command center and back. So everyone on the ground has an AR glass. What happens is they scan the QR code on the container and out pops a little box detailing all the details about the container, like its uh, unit number, its allocated position, and so on. Then they know that this box goes where. And when it's loaded on the plane, the guy also has an AR glass, and he knows that this box is supposed to go to that lot, and he confirms that that's happening. The process is not only easier, because the handlers still have to handle paper now, but also more efficient. It can shorten loading time as much as by 15 minutes, which can make a difference between a delayed flight, catching up to schedule, or missing it. It is not see-through, it's a video feed. So I'm seeing a, what's happening here in real life, and a video feed of what I'm looking at through here. With my thumb, I can toggle through the different windows. There's a scan mode to scan the QR code. And then I can see the, the map of the where the cargo is supposed to go on the plane. Um, it's quite well designed actually. I can easily see the, uh, the cargo identification number and the number that is in order that it's supposed to go to and the lot that it's supposed to go to. By using AR, we can make the apron processes and the cargo loading much more efficient faster for passengers, quicker connections for uh, shippers, and also more productive in terms of the business equation. Did you like it? Um, another cool AR glasses are the ones from Microsoft, Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, these offer quite a very good immersive experience. Uh, you can see uh, digital objects, so they are mixed reality glasses um, you can see digital uh, objects into the physical world and you can actually interact with these digital objects. Uh, Microsoft HoloLens have a lot of gestures recognition. So you can click on objects, you can expand them, you can get them to the left or to the right. Um, these are pretty awesome and that's a use case um, from a pediatric hospital in UK, in London. Um, actually, uh, they have an application for the HoloLens visualizing a very detailed 3D model of the organ that they operate on a real patient. So that's th this, this kind of use cases are actually changing the world right now as we speak. The third AR glasses that uh, we chose for today um, are coming from XM Reality. Uh, these AR glasses are built uh, by this company and the software is built also uh, by them. Uh, they have a remote, assistant, a remote assistance app that's working very smoothly. We liked it a lot when we tried it in the conference. That's, that's why we show it right now. Um, AR glasses have their challenges so far. Uh, first um, is about the cost. They are expensive. I don't know about the enterprise use cases. I cannot judge. But for the end user, for, for the end consumer, 1,000 euros are quite a lot because this is the average cost for AR glasses. Um, another challenge is the comfort for the user. Some of them are quite heavy, like Microsoft HoloLens. When I first put them, I was like, oh my god, this is heavy. <laughs> Uh, some of them are heating up um, after, I don't know, half an hour of usage, they are heating up and you can no longer put them on your head. Um, and another challenge is the battery. Um, in average, the AR glasses um, battery um, is alive for two hours, more or less two hours. So after two hours, you have to recharge them. So these are the main three challenges that they face currently, but of course the industry is well aware of it and a lot of players in the industry are working to or are tackling these challenges. The other alternative for the AR glasses is a smartphone um, or using the camera from your smartphone. Of course this has clear advantages. 
like this is a technology that we all have in our pocket. We all have a smartphone. We all know how to use it. Um, it's natural already, even by my parents, to use the smartphone. So it's easy to use, easy accessible, is cheaper, of course, than the AR glasses. Um, and another big advantage is for AR on mobile phone is that we have a lot of SDKs, software development kits from a lot of providers. What if the first person to respond could always be the person who fixes it? When the problem isn't covered in training or instruction manuals, and the expert is on the other side of town or the other side of the world. Get it done right the first time with Vuforia Chalk. It's an easy, powerful new way to communicate remotely in the moments when accuracy and efficiency really matter to your bottom line. Better knowledge transfer, real-time collaboration, and bringing your best minds together from anywhere in the world, right when it's needed. Empower your people to solve problems together as if they are together, so everyone can be the expert. Before you talk, see it, solve it, together. Yeah, that's uh, an example of AR or mobile phone. It's an app developed by the leader in AR industry right now. It's called Vuforia, and we will work with Vuforia today. Um, but software development kits are already um, on the market from last summer from the big players like Google. They have launched AR Core, like Apple. They have launched AR Kit, like Facebook. They have also AR Studio. So there are development kits in which these kind of big players invest a lot. Um, we believe that they will be um, very fast adopted because actually in, in, in the first six months after the launch of these uh, SDKs, there were like 13 million downloads of AR kit and they were already available like 60 apps, AR core apps on Google Play Store only six months after, the after launching these SDKs. So we see a very fast adoption. Uh, well, working in retail, Metro Kashinkeri, <laughs> we have some examples of um, mobile apps that were already launched in this um, business domain, like IKEA Place. I think you, you know about this app. It's uh, an app used to visualize the furniture from IKEA in your own house, in your own room to see if it fits, how it fits, and so on. Uh, this is a very cool app from Converse. You can actually test on your foot the shoes that they sell. Uh, that's from Dulux, yeah, to test the color of their paintings on your own wall, yeah, in your own house. That's from Amazon. Of course, Amazon is in, yeah. Uh, that's the equivalent from IKEA Place. You, you can visualize objects that you can buy from Amazon in your own house. Um, that's an app uh, augmenting the menu uh, from Four uh, Seasons Hotels. So you see um, via your smartphone the menu, and you see the 3D model of the, um, of the dish, of the plate that you buy. That's really awesome. Um, and of course, China is in. Uh, we have a really cool um, virtual store called Yeodian, if I'm spelling this properly, I'm not sure. Um, they have built virtual stores in parking lots all around China. They have hundreds of parking lots, augmented reality parking lots, where they can see a virtual store and they can order from that virtual store and so on. Uh, one might ask, uh, why don't they buy online? Well, because this way is much more funnier. <laughs> Where are we as Metro Systems? Um, we had a challenge, uh, a hackathon in the summer, um, asking all the employees to come up with ideas in retail, in tech in trade. Um, and we came up with um, the idea starting from a problem that I have. Uh, my daughter is allergic to milk. So when I go in the store, I have to read all the small ingredients on all the packages with the biscuits and so on to see if they contain milk or not. So it would be awesome for me to have an app just to go with the phone on the shelf 
and to have a warning for all the products that contain milk. And we have done a proof of concept in the hackathon for this. We actually also won also a prize. And the interest to uh, a lot of um, business domains yeah, for this technology. Uh, yeah, that's the first use case. Yeah, showing the ingredients or the allergens um, of the products that we sell. Another use case with, is with the discounts, of course. Um, so we thought about uh, why not having the smartphone attached to the trolley in the store and the phone to recognize where you are located in the store and just to have some pop-ups on your phone about the discounts uh, that uh, Metro Cash and Carry has for you as a customer today um, for the products that are near, near around you uh, with regards to your location in store. Uh, this use case for uh, Metro Cash and Carry Romania is much more intriguing, of course. <laughs> it's their business, so um, probably we will start with this one to be, uh, to be implemented. Uh, it's work in progress, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, this is our team, our augmented reality team. This is us loving extended reality in Munich last month. Um, okay. That's, uh, that's with the introduction. Uh, do you need a short break, five minutes break, or let's continue, yeah? Okay? Okay. Who wants to work with us? Uh, you need this kind of papers. So uh, who and needs these. them? Wait. I will provide them to you. Well, you will also require a few images. I will um, shortly provide on USB. Oh, wait. Take one. <laughs> Uh, okay. If anyone is left without a paper, just let me know. Raise your hand. Ah, oh, okay. How may I remind? So, okay, while Aura is distributing the materials, let me show you the tools, the tools we're going to be working with. Uh, basically, we're going to be working with Unity and uh, Vuforia as the AR detection plugin. Now, what is Unity? Unity is a game engine, you know, like the thing that makes this stuff. Uh, what do we use it for? Well, Firstly, any AR application needs a good interface, an interface that pops out that you can easily use. So, obviously, we're going to be using 3D for the interfaces, and also we're going to be using it to generate AR objects, either 2D or 3D. <coughs> um, we chose Unity because it's modular, pretty much. If you don't, uh, if you find you want to use it for something, there's more or less a plugin out there for it. Um, it has plenty of resources available. You can always find tutorials. You have an asset store from which you can always download materials or models or actually even have made applications. Uh, it has a strong community. You can always visit the forums and see if you have uh, any kind of uh, issues, and they'll likely help you resolve them. And also, the most important, it has cross-platform support. So you can actually, uh, if you were to make an app in Unity, you can actually translate it to Windows, to Mac, to Android, to iPhone. It doesn't make any difference. Unity does all the back work for you. Okay, and but most importantly of all, this all makes it easy to use. Okay, so what about Vuforia? Well, Vuforia is, uh, from Vuforia, we're going to be using the Vuforia engine, which is basically an SDK. It manages, it will be managing the detection, image detection, model detection, anything like that. Um, and its main uh, features is it can recognize pictures, like uh, anything you upload into it uh, that you photographed with your camera or that you designed and then printed out, like we just did. Um, 
It can recognize objects. I can scan that water bottle, for example, and I can upload it to the Vuforia databases, and it will recognize it next time around, or any other special markers that they have. <clears throat> also, you chose Vuforia Engine because it already has Unity integration, so it's pretty easy to work with it. All right, well, with that said, it's time to build an app. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to be starting off with um, explaining the basics of how Unity works. I've already booted Unity into a fairly blank project, let's call it that. Um, and I'm going to shortly discuss for everyone that's following along what all of the fields are. This basically is your scene view. Here you can drag and drop objects around, you can move them in, posi uh, in um, position from um, relation to each other. And you can see how models kind of look. The, to the left side is the hierarchy view. Any entity will be displayed here in relationship to each other. For example, if I were to drag a cube on stage, uh, let me, or fine, an apple, let's say. Um, one second to actually make it visible. Okay, that's a bit too much, but should be fine. Okay, so that's an apple. We can see it showing in the hierarchy view as well. And we can also see it in the scene view, and we can control where it is positionally. Um, on, the, on the right side view, we notice we have an inspector. This manages um, basically all the numbers. You can see the position in XYZ. You can see its current rotation. You can alter it if you want to. You can control its scale, like I just did a second ago. You can change the object in itself, the texture that the object has, stuff like this. Um, you can also add uh, returning to the hierarchy view. You can also bundle objects together. For example, if I want uh, two apples to be moving in the same uh, at the same time, I can just make one of them a child of the other, and at that point, if I choose to move them, they will both move together. That's about the basic of how hierarchy works. If you have models that are ch children of a bigger object, they all get bundled together as, um, as far as relationship, uh, positional relationship goes. Um, okay, now, uh, for most of you who booted an empty scene, I'm guessing you had a camera model right here. Uh, since we're going to be using augmented reality, I already deleted the camera model, and we'll be adding the Vuforia special AR camera. This basically uh, will change the backdrop, the background, into the video feed. For example, if I were to play test the game right now, uh, playing play will take me to this game tab right here, which will show me how my app is currently running, I will simply get a video feed from my uh, webcam. Yeah, that's about it. Um, now, after we've dragged the AR camera, we can notice in the inspector that we have a Vuforia configuration in the right. Uh, this is one thing that you have to do the first time you actually um, uh, start a new Vuforia project. You have to open the Vuforia configuration, and you have to add an app license key. Now. Just, just one second, Vlad, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ones who told us that they want to build this app is that okay until now? Have you put the AR camera in your Unity project? Okay. Uh, it Who can ask you to do import. it and needs help? Okay. Okay. So we, we actually thought about this part more like a workshop, an interactive one. So if you really want to, to do this, Vlad can come and support you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can easily show you. I, I'll do the first steps, and afterwards, I'll come to everybody who okay. needs my help. Okay. okay. Uh, so, like I was saying, after adding this, we need to open the Vuforia configuration. There, there, Vuforia will actually ask us for an application license key. Now, 
seeing as Vuforia offers developer support, uh, the free developer for proof of concepting, at this point you can just go to developer.vuforia.com. Uh, at least, um, I think we mentioned that you need an account here. Um, you will create or uh, you'll create a new account. I'll just log into mine right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here, you can get a development key. You can simply create a fresh application name. We'll just call this demo. Um, we accept the terms and conditions like any software. And of course, we can confirm. At this point, we will have a free development um, demo. Now, when clicking on this, it will show us an actual uh, number. This is the this string right here is what you need to introduce into your Unity project in the application license key, in order for Vuforia to start working. This is basically the licensing uh, part of the um, process. Now. Um, after doing this, we can notice that there are several more configurations to be had here. We have the camera device mode. I have mine set to mode optimized quality. You can, if you have a really slow device or you know you ha you're going to have a really busy scene, you can set it to optimized speed or you can just leave it somewhere in between in the default mode. <clears throat> the camera direction is also going to be controlled by this. You can force, if you're, for example, you're running this from a phone, you can force it to use the uh, camera from the back of the phone or the front of the phone from this camera direction. And also, uh, there are some more advanced options that we'll be discussing a bit later. As far as these steps go, um, where did you, the, some people actually said they have some issues? Yes? I actually missed the step, sorry. <laughs> um, so, there is another uh, configurations menu you can uh, go to. In uh, the project settings, edit project settings, you have player. This is basically um, the whole application. The player, the player resolves everything you make in the scene view. So, uh, right here, on, uh, I'll just minimize this, you have XR settings at the bottom. XR settings, and you have a for augmented reality support. If you don't check that, it will uh, not enable any kind of uh, Vuforia plugins. Okay. Uh, no, Vuforia should come with Unity since the latest patch, unless you're running Legacy. In the Legacy, you had to install Unity as a plugin. Right now, Vuforia is integrated. Unity will just ask you to download the package if you're connected to the internet, if you want to use Vuforia. Okay. Um, while we're here, we can also have a look at other settings. Since this will be an Android app, it's ideal to actually have a package name for it. And also, uh, in the resolution and presentation, we can force it to landscape. So your app will not have to scale weirdly when you turn the phone around. Exactly. Or it can. It depends on how you want to see it. Mm. Anyway, I'm assuming that at this point everybody... Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you're currently playing the game. Uh, press the play button to stop it. Uh, please make sure the air camera is the uh, is the highest in the hierarchy, uh, right under the sample scene. It is the main camera view. And delete the delete the camera that is uh, uh, that was added originally. Hmm. 
Okay. Oh, oh we ex exit play mode, by the way, if you want to make changes. Press this play button. And, uh, oh, yeah, okay, that's it. Good. The configs where I put my key, my config key. Um, ah. Okay. Oh, you have to click on the arcam arrow, and you should have a Vuforia behavior script. Click on this. Open Vuforia configuration. There. Okay. might not have before. I'm not sure if it works on Mac. <laughs> do you do you have the plugin installed? I haven't no. installed the plugin. Yeah, I don't think it works on Mac. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not I did not test it on Mac at all. Okay. So, I'm not sure. Oh, we can uh, talk about it after after the presentation. Okay. Oh, anyone else? Okay. Um all right. So, after adding the air camera, we can actually start adding objects that can be recognized into the, uh, from the real world. I'll just right click in the hierarchy mode, go to Vuforia, and I can add an image target right now. Now, it will ask me for a database, and this is where um, I actually need to provide a USB stick for the people who want to follow along. Because um, we, uh, we actually require, you are actually required to create a database here in the Vuforia developer portal. Uh, one second, and I'll, I'll copy the images and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So, for anyone wishing to follow along, I've uploaded two images. Um, whichever wants to copy them and upload them to their own Vuforia account. Uh, okay. So, uh, at this point, let's assume I don't have those images uploaded. I would go to my uh, Vuforia developer portal. At this point, we already assume you have the license. You can go to Target Manager and add a database. The database will be on the device, of course. You will name it whatever you want. And at this point, the database is created. Now, in this database, you can add targets. A target is usually either a single image, that's the JPEGs I just put on in the demo folder on that stick, a cuboid, this would mean that the software will recognize a cube shape and the texture surrounding it, a cylinder shape with the same specifications just being a cylinder, and a 3D object. Uh, this one's a bit more complex. If anyone is interested in this particular category, we can talk after the presentation. Now, this will ask me to choose a file. I can just open up my um, documentation and choose, a, choose whatever file I want to work with. Yeah, this one's fine. Um, it will ask me for a width. This is basically how, how big I expect the image to be in the real world. So let's say if I print this on a, uh, A4 paper, I'm expecting the width to be around 210 uh, millimeters. It's measured in millimeters. It's also going to be measured in millimeters in the scene uh, in Unity. But since I've chosen a small one, I'm going to go with 100 millimeters because this was a, a, a A5. Okay. 
Now, once I uploaded my image, I can download this entire database and specify that it's specifically for the Unity editor. Downloading this database will um, take some time because it's compiling the image and testing. Uh, once then, I can save this database to wherever I want on my computer and open it. Uh, firstly, I did want to make one more note about this. When you choose to upload images into the Vuforia developer portal, it will give you a rating for that image in, uh, measured in stars. This ra rating means how easily detectable your target image is. Usually a good target image has to have a lot of sharp uh, turns. It has to have a lot of unique identifying features. Um, actually, this is not quite ideal. It has a few sharp edges here, here, and here, but it also has a lot of undesirables. Circles, for example, are very bad, and so are repeating patterns. Usually you want something like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's just say a picture of leaves on the ground that actually looks like it's repeating itself, but for the engine, this looks unique, and this is very easily trackable. This helps you because you can actually put stuff like this as a texture on a floor somewhere, or anywhere you want to make an augmented uh, environment, and you can, make, uh, you can make it very easily detectable for phones or glasses. Okay, once you get the database downloaded, just run it. Unity, would Unity opened? Um, Unity will ask me if I want to import this. I already have a better version of this, so I'm not going to import it. I just showed you so you can follow along. Um, you can, once you imported this, you will have a functioning database. Okay, so at this point, you can look at your image target, choose the database. It, has, it will probably have the name uh, you already gave it. I have a different Kodiaks database, but you get it. Yours will be named demo or whatever you chose to name it. And you can use, choose the uh, target image. I, cho I would choose this one for now. And let's, mm, what? Ah, there we go. Okay, so I chose this image. Now, uh, as far as this goes, we can actually start testing Wait, uh, Aura, you gave away all my papers. <laughs> I need one back. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so right now, I can. This will not show anything graphically, but I can test if my target image is working. If I press play, this will bring the camera online. Okay. Okay, and I can actually open the console here and look at what it's saying. Now, I'll just hold this image next to it and check if it says trackable final found. The final is the name of the file. And if it says that, now it said lost, it will find it again, etc. So at this point, I can be pretty sure that detection works. So I can start adding stuff to my environment. So let's say I wanted to actually show something. We'll just go to prefabs. I, create, I prepared some stuff in advance for this. You can actually use any object for this. I'll just drag a cube here. And let's say I'll give it a bigger, well, no, no. that's too much. Mm, no. OK, something smaller a bit. There we go. OK, so I'll just, what? Ah, the perspective, it fooled me. Sorry, uh, this will not take long. Okay. So now, I'll just, I just put this image, and I'll make it a child of the target. This is an important step. With the, uh, with the image, as a child, well, this is a model actually, it's not an image, a child of the image target, I can now start 
the application again. This will not show up on my screen right now because the image target is not in view. And once I show it the image, it will also show the cube right next to the image. And it's completely related positionally, as you can tell. OK, that's about um, the first step. You can also. <laughs> You can also add more complex environments. For example, I already have a pre-prepared pre one for now. Uh, let's say this forest. I already have. This is another image target. And the, the first one still works. But if I show it this one now, it will start showing me a different environment. Right, because this one looks like this. I have already prepared this part of the level. And um, one thing you did probably notice with the um, camera is that it didn't immediately show all the features that, Im that that image had. Like, right now it only shows a, f a bunch of the trees. I have to get really, really close to see even half of it. Um, that part is handled by the configuration of the AR camera. You can change that at any time along with other stuff. Clicking on the AR camera right now, we can see it has clipping planes. Clipping planes basically means that um, the camera will start drawing from the distance 0 0.05 units until 2,000 units. If something is further than 2,000 units from this camera, it will start, stop drawing it. We can just fix this by adding an extra zero. 